Oh hi, didn't see you there. My name's Casey Ferris, thanks for checking out this video, and today we're talking about animating grades using keyframes. This is another one of those things in Resolve that is kind of scary, but it's really not that big of a deal. So I'm going to show you how I keyframe things, as well as a couple situations where I actually use that. So the first one is pretty common, and it's just animating in between two grades. So here's what we're going to do. We have this shot, it's a panning shot from kind of a bright driveway to this darker treehouse looking thing. And it's not terrible right off the bat, but let's say we want to make this part look as good as it can, and then also make this part look as good as it can and fade in between them. It's a pretty easy thing to do. I'm going to start at either side of the shot, either this side or this side. Let's, let's start with the bright side, and I'm going to do a primary grade on it. And so I'm going to bring down my shadows a little bit, bring down my midtones, bring up my saturation just a little, not too crazy, and warm up my midtones a little bit. Probably take out some of that magenta. That looks decent, I like that. And I'm gonna label this and call it driveway. Now I'm gonna move later in my shot, and I notice that this is pretty dark. I could put a window on that and track it and that type of thing, but sometimes you just wanna change the entire grade. So I'm gonna make another serial node and I'm gonna call this house, and this is where my grade is gonna live for this part of the shot. So definitely wanna boost up the gamma, Maybe the gain just a little bit, maybe warm it up just a little to kind of optimize this part of the shot. So the problem is if I go to the beginning of the shot, it might be a little bit too bright. And if I don't have this, it's a little too dark on the house. So what we're going to do is fade this second node in as the camera pans over. And we're going to do that using the key output. So I'm going to go to my key panel and under key output, you see gain. This is pretty much the opacity of the node. And so we're just going to keyframe this. I'm going to switch over to my keyframes palette. And there's a lot of ways that you can add keyframes. You can add them manually. You can do all sorts of crazy things. But this is the easiest way to do it. And you don't even need the other ways, in, in my experience. Just figure out what you want to keyframe. This is corrector number two. So this layer right here is corrector number two. And I'm going to hit this little diamond. And that's the auto keyframe diamond. And so what I can do is just roll my gain down a little bit and bring it back up to one. And you'll see it added a keyframe right here. So if I twirl down my corrector two, you can see where it is animating. And for some reason, everything within the key is listed under the defocus property in the keyframes panel. And you can pretty much animate anything this way and you don't even have to know what it's called. If you have auto keyframe on and you change something, it's gonna add a keyframe to wherever that control lives. So gamma lives in color corrector. And I'm just gonna undo that because I don't actually want that. But the great thing is now that I know where it is, I can turn off my auto keyframe and just turn it on for defocus. Then if I play with all this stuff, I'm not animating it accidentally. So I have a keyframe for defocus. So at three seconds and four frames, this key output gain is at one, which means that it's all the way on. And I don't actually want it on right there. So I'm gonna bring it to where I do want it on about eight seconds or so. And I'm just gonna drag my keyframe down to where it's supposed to be. So at eight seconds, this node is gonna be at 100% opacity. Now I can go back to where I want it completely off. Let's say here at about two seconds, and I'm gonna grab my key output gain of my second node and bring it down to zero. And cool stuff happens when you do that. First of all, it adds another keyframe because I have auto keyframe on, and it also tweens in between these keyframes. And so it's gonna fade in between these two grades. Now I can turn off my auto keyframe, and now I have my shot with a nice subtle fade. So let's use the same technique to do kind of a special effect. Here I have a shot of somebody hitting a light switch, and we can animate our grade so that the lights turn on. And we'll do that in basically the same way, but with a little tweak. So I'm gonna add a new node. I'm gonna do a grade of either the lights on or the lights off. It doesn't matter which you start with. So I'm gonna start with the lights on. Bring up my scopes here and balance the shot. Give it some warmth maybe. Give it some saturation. And there's my grade for the lights being on. And I'm gonna label this lights on. And I'm gonna make a new node. And I can do the same thing I did before, but this time I'm gonna get a little bit tricky. I'll label this lights off, and I'm gonna turn off my first node and just work on this node by itself. This is gonna be the lights off grade. So I'm gonna bring my midtones down, highlights up, and maybe give it that Hollywood looking blue, crush those blacks a little bit, maybe give it a curve. So that's our lights off grade. Now you'll notice when I turn on this first node, this looks super weird. So what I'm gonna do is animate these nodes to switch back and forth. So it's either gonna be like this for lights off, or this for lights on. Now I can do this in the same exact way I did before. 
and go to a point where I want the lights on, let's say right there, and add a keyframe to my first corrector and go to my key panel and set the gain to one and move over a frame and set the gain to zero. And so now we have pretty much that effect of turning on the lights. And if I wanted to, I could go into my second node and do pretty much the opposite, which would be having it on until this point and then turning my gain down. But there's a fancy cool way to get around this. I'm gonna turn off my auto key on my corrector one, and I'm just gonna grab this little arrow from my first node and connect it to my second node. And what that's gonna do is automatically switch these back and forth. So when node one's key output is zero, node two's key output is one, and then vice versa. And the reason that this works is these little blue arrows have to do with the node's key. And it just happens to be the default that if you connect a node to another node, it's the exact opposite key. This is pretty much the same way that outside nodes work. So if I were to right click on this node and say add outside node, you'll see these are connected and the key is flipped. And so that's a nice fancy way to do a quick switch in between two nodes and you only have to animate one node. So we've been talking about animating keys, but what if we want to animate, say, a shape or something else? I have this panning shot here, and there's this guy who has a blue shirt and shorts. And let's say for whatever reason, I want to change the color of his shirt. Normally what I do is pull a qualifier on his shirt like this. Let's see what we got. We have a decent selection on his shirt, but the problem is I'm selecting a bunch of other blue things in the shot too. And we can't have that, so we can limit it with a window. So I'll just grab a circle window here. Won't make it too soft. And I'll just put it around this guy. And in a lot of situations, we could track this. And for part of the shot, that'll probably work fine. But the problem is, it's kind of a pain to track this guy, because he kind of moves around and turns and twists and does a bunch of stuff that's a little bit crazy to track. So I can track part of the shot, part of what works here. But now I need to do some manual animation on this shape. So we're gonna animate this pretty much the same way using auto keyframes. So I'm gonna to go to a point where I like this. Let's say there. Turn on my auto keyframe for corrector two and just grab my shape and move it a little bit. And that's gonna add a keyframe. Now I can go down and it says circle window and I'm gonna add auto keyframe just to the circle window. And let's move to the other side of our track. About there and add a keyframe there. So in between those two keyframes, this should be fine. And it is. And now I can pretty much, I'll go to the end of the shot and move this over where I want. And this keyframe is everything about the window. So it's shape, it's angle, it's softness. And I can go through and keyframe this. So move this over a little bit and just go through my shot until I have him selected the whole time. And there we go, I've just moved through the shot and positioned the circle around him. I'm gonna turn off my auto keyframes so I don't mess anything up. And now you see we have a nice selection for this guy's shirt. And we can change the color and it works nicely. So that's pretty much how I keyframe everything. So I hope that's helpful, it gets rid of some of the scariness for people who've been confused about keyframes in Resolve. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, you could hit like if you wanted to. And obviously for more color grading DaVinci Resolve tutorials, post-production tutorials, and tutorials about table saws, make sure to subscribe here to my channel on YouTube. Once again, my name is Casey Ferris. I'll catch you next time.